Well, this isn't quite the way I wanted to start season three. <laughs> So, hi, welcome back to Red Pagan Corner, Season 3. I wish I could start this off on a good note, but I can't. Um, but I figured the what best way to start this season off is to explain why this season has been delayed. Why, essentially, Red Pagan Corner grinded to a much longer halt than I wanted it to. But, you know, better late than never, I guess. What I wanted to do was start the season off with a revamping of the old video, Is Donald Trump a Fascist? Which I did about eight years ago. And obviously back then I was pre-transition. And, um, you know, I babbled quite a bit in it. I mean, I still do, but that's not the point. Um, I wanted to reflect on that and rehash that and boil away the, the meat, or in this case, the battle, and create a video that you guys could actually consume and enjoy without having to fall asleep about 15, 20 minutes into it, because I noticed that the demographic tends to turn off about 10 or 12 minutes into the video and that's why I'm trying to do more of these videos that don't go that long that and you know my uh, storage space on my phone will not allow for that unfortunately that never materialized um, it's not that the video wasn't finished it's just that the writing process kind of stalled near the ending and the tweaks that I wanted to make to it and eventually film never materialized because I was going through a lot of shit. And you guys deserve to understand why this video is going to be delayed and why I'm still trying to work through pushing it out. Um, but I want it to be done and done right, not just rushed out because I feel like I'm on a deadline. <laughs> um, I love you guys. You guys in the ML community have obviously are my supporters. And I want to be able to give you guys a very well-informed, broken-down product that's not just banter and not just sheer commentary, but that's actually like... I don't know if you want to say informative, but not the the typical shit that I used to put out. I feel like I've gotten to this point where I make at least somewhat better quality videos and that my, my speaking on here has gotten at least a little bit better. So I want to put out a quality product, or at least as best quality as Red Pagan Corner can deliver. Um... So let's just kind of start from the beginning. Um, back in December, uh, there was quite a few problems. Um, number one, right as we were uh, ending season two, thankfully the videos had already been pre-recorded and were ready for release, but I got COVID and I was sick for about six days and it was probably the worst fucking experience I have ever had. It felt like having a really, like, the world's worst head cold, where basically my head felt like it was a hot air balloon. And, like, I feel like, and I think I got, like, an ear infection and everything else from it, and it was just really, it was just really bad. I even was a bit delirious for a couple of days. Almost felt like going to the hospital. And I'm... Just to let everybody know, I am double vaccinated and double boosted. And I know that some of the freaking fascist, anti-vaxxer, nonsense, QAnon idiots out there 
are going to say, oh, ha, 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 see, you're vaccinated and, and you still got it. See, it's a hoax. No, it never says anywhere that it said you could, it could prevent you from getting COVID. It simply protects you from, you know, the death aspect, which, you know, a lot of freaking, it, you know, numbskull freaking right wingers tend to forget or just ignore because, you know, they want to believe Fox News um, and other bullshit. Um, or just believe Trump, I guess. Um, but yeah, no, I got COVID and I was sick for a few days and my partner had it at the same time and I actually was the one that gave it to them, sadly. Um, I don't know where I got it from. I could have picked it up on the train. I could have picked it up, you know, at work. I could have picked it up from the grocery store. I don't know. I simply do not know. I don't even at this point care. I just wanted to... I'm glad that I got through it and that I'm good now. Um, two weeks after that, I got bronchitis and then I was dealing with that. During this process, uh, we've had, we had a couple of incidents with my vehicle, which is basically the only vehicle that we have right now that vehicle actually is not even technically legally mine that car is actually my mother's but i am currently leasing it so to speak subleasing it borrowing it whatever the case um on loan i guess uh to me um and so that um yeah and um that car um got rear-ended Thankfully, nothing major, but it got rear-ended. Um, had the fuel injector line severed not once, but twice. First, we thought it might have been rats because our space is right near a freaking dumpster. Um, but considering it happened twice and it seems like it was surgically cut, kind of leads us to believe that it wasn't just rats chewing on it. Not saying it couldn't be, but we'll get to that in a bit. Um, yeah, then uh, partner's uh, partner got rear-ended. Um, and then just when I thought everything was, be, would, was fine, fuel injector line had gotten, you know, cut that second time. Um... And on January 6th, my great aunt passed away. I was very close to her. My family was very close to her. And I was left in a grieving process because my great aunt and I had just spoken on New Year's Day morning. She had been asking me a lot of questions about transitioning and what cis and trans meant and different things like that. And we had a short but very productive conversation. And um, so when I got the news the afternoon of the 6th, my first feeling was shock. Um, I didn't know how to react. I had just spoken to her a few days before, prior, and that was really, really hard. And I've cried so many times in my transition because hormones. But I've never cried so hard than I did that day. Freaking hair. Uh, um, I cried on my way to work. I cried when I got to work. Um, it was hard. Um, and I had to deal with that and still go to work and still had, you know, because we live in a capitalist society, I can't just take off of work, you know, because, you know, oh, boo hoo, you lost your great aunt, you know. 
It's like, because capitalism isn't forgiving about that shit. So, yeah, I, um, I mean, thankfully I have, I have a work environment that is very forgiving, but I'm talking about the generalized society we live in. So I can't, it's like, yeah, they, they would support me and everything like that, but capitalism itself is not forgiving and I've got, still got bills and rent and other shit I've got to pay for. So I still got to go to work, unfortunately. So I was dealing with that, and then I think it was either the same day or within the same week, my partner's car, which was non-operational, but still, uh, we were planning on getting it up and going at some point, <laughs> um, it got vandalized and probably totaled by some somebody. Somebody came by, busted out windows slashed all four tires you know possibly tampered with the gas tank so that thing is 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 toast and it's really sad because my partner you know you know paid some good money a few years back for that and you know the only reason why we hadn't been driving it for a while was a, it was non-operational, and we were planning on getting it back up and running at some point. Um, and two, um, not only that, we were kind of wanting to have a second car at some point. Um, but um, also just because, um, you know, at the time gas prices were going up, and we... Um, we just felt it was easier to just carpool, but then things kind of changed. Schedules kind of changed. My schedule at least changed. And, um, yeah, things have become a little bit harder since then. Um, so there was that. Um, and then I've been also, uh, dealing with my, um, cousin who lives in Washington state, um, he's in the hospital and, um, had to have essentially a heart, uh, like a heart surgery. Um, and, um, there's been complications and honestly, he's been touch and go since the moment they put him in the hospital to begin with. So, I've been dealing with potential harassment from some individual. I have an idea who it might be, but I don't have the proof. And it is somebody from my past that I suspect, but again, I don't have any proof. I'm not going to get into that right at the moment. Um... But potentially, it, I'm faced with the idea that it could possibly be a targeted attack from just some bigot. Or anybody else that I could have possibly pissed off that might have found my location. You know, or been stalking me, or whatever it is. You know, I don't think that I've been doxxed. Um, but... It's one of those things that it is uncomfortable. I'm not scared. I'm not necessarily even angry. Just annoyed at a lot of that crap. And then obviously very depressed because, you know, I'm dealing with illness and death in the family. I'm already dealing with the potential of losing you know, and a very elderly relative in the coming years. So I've been going through a lot in just a short time span. So forgive me that it has taken so long to start this season. Forgive me that it's taken so long to get out the video that I've been wanting to get out for a while. But I felt like 
in order to start this season, you guys deserve to understand why this season has been delayed and why the, my projects have been delayed. And don't get me wrong, this video that I wanted to make as my season premiere, I still plan on getting that out. It's just not going to be the season premiere, obviously. But it will be out at some point. Once I have that all finished, once I'm not working so much, once I can kind of get out of this depressive slump, it'll be finished. In the meantime, I'm going to keep on producing the content that I can and I'm going to keep on keeping on taking it one step at a time because that's what I've always done and that's what I always will do like I said I'm not this isn't something that's going to cripple me you know the only thing that's going that's going to cripple me you know is, you know, is literally if somebody ends up, you know, bash, you know, bashing my face in or something, you know, literally attacking me, potentially even putting me in the hospital. I don't back down easily. You guys should know that by now. I'm not a person that hides in terror. I'm not a person that usually fears anybody. And I'm definitely not a person that just gives up and tucks tail and runs away or tries to hide. And I'm not going to. I'm going to keep on keeping on. Because that's what I've always done and that's what I always will do. So, to the people that see this as, you know, oh, look, you know, she's, you know, you know, she's finally hit a rough patch, you know, maybe this is finally the end of her, you know, of her BS. No. I'm still going to keep on, keep on calling out BS when I see it. I'm going to keep on pointing out hypocrisies when I see it. I'm going to keep on educating people when I have the opportunity to. I'm still the same person. I'm still Red Pagan Nicole. I'm still Comrade Red Pagan. I'm still, I'm still on Twitter. I'm still talking shit on there most every day. But it's the reason why Discord has been a little bit eh from me lately. And why I haven't, why I haven't been getting the videos out that I wanted to get out. But you guys deserve to know why that was. So, I wish again this season could start on a more lighthearted note or even, you know, a more, at least a more cheerful note. Maybe not necessarily lighthearted, because let's be honest, when you're dealing with, you know, videos like, is Donald Trump a fascist, that's not exactly what I'd call lighthearted. It maybe informational, it might be um, a little bit funny in some cases. Um, hey, maybe it might might even be, be a nice perspective or, or you know, a, a whatever, I don't know. I don't, but definitely not somber and not this <laughs> um but yeah uh welcome to season welcome to season three of red pagan corner i'm red pagan nicole this has been red pagan corner until next time <laughs>